Just as Helen Thomas was always given the honor of asking the first question, oh, no. John, John, no, I'm my no. Helen Thomas. No, no, no. no. I'm not. <laughs> Get in there. I have no first question. Get in there. <laughs> Well, Governor, how's the budget talks going? Um, well, uh, there haven't been any uh, direct communication between myself and Senator Harris uh, this morning, but um, uh, there has been communication, uh, I believe, between our staffs, and uh, we will continue to try to work. Uh, I don't think any of us, quite frankly, should leave this town uh, this week without this problem being resolved. And so I hope there'll be that kind of commitment on the part of both chambers and both parties uh, to make sure that we attend to the needs of the state of Ohio uh, before any of us attend to our own personal needs in terms of uh, individual schedule, schedules or individual plans. Uh, as I said yesterday, I repeat today, this is a very serious matter uh, and the state of Ohio's future will be impacted um, by how we resolve this budget uh, impasse. Governor, the Board of Regents has put out a printout saying that yes. universities and two-year colleges would face a total, or could face a total of something like $600 million in cuts yes. if this isn't resolved. Yeah. What's your take? Well, we are not crying wolf. One of the things that I've been trying to communicate as clearly as I can is that this is not a false alarm. This is not, you know, the normal political back and forth that sometimes occurs when budgets are being discussed. We are facing a very definite deadline. The implications of failing to come to an agreement are catastrophic for our state. And uh, what we are trying to do is as clearly as possible communicate to the stakeholders and to the public what's at stake here. And so we're trying to let our institutions of higher education um, be fully aware. Uh, we're, I, I, I met earlier today with uh, the head of the library system in Cleveland, Ohio. We're trying to communicate with every stakeholder group that we can communicate with um, what could be the consequences. Uh, I, I'm not trying to be, you know, exaggerating. Um, uh, I'm, I'm just trying to clearly communicate what could be the consequences of a failure for us to, to achieve uh, the closing of this budget cap in, in a timely manner. What are you telling the libraries? Uh, I'm telling them uh, that uh, they can and will be impacted uh, as, as well, uh, depending upon uh, how this is resolved. Governor, I was there ever any consideration to endorsing construction reform? You're saying, look, that's a good compromise. That was my own panel that recommended well, those reforms. Well, you know, uh, I'm going to, you know, you're going to get tired of hearing me say this, but I think it's relevant to this, to this discussion. Uh, for 14 years, nothing was done on construction reform in this state. Um, John Houston was Speaker of the House and had total control of what happened in the House of Representatives over the last two years. No bill was ever introduced. No bill has has yet to be introduced in either chamber. Uh, the Senate leadership that says construction reform must be a part of this budget fix has yet to introduce a bill in the chamber. And so uh, construction reform is my issue. I'm the governor that developed the study committee and has been working conscientiously to get the various stakeholders together I am committed to construction reform. I say that publicly. Uh, I am absolutely committed to getting this done. But I believe what's happening here is just political games gamesmanship. And um, if I felt like there was a serious uh, effort uh, on the part of those who are insisting that this be done in this budget, uh, I you know I, I think I would feel better about it and about what they're what they're suggesting. But there are 21 Republicans in the Senate that take 17 votes to pass a bill. They haven't even introduced a bill. They will not vote for construction reform. And I think there's something else going on here, and I don't want to be, uh, you know, unfair. But uh, there are Republican senators who do not want to vote for construction reform. 
but if construction reform is a part of this budget fix they can vote no and say they're voting against uh, the, the, the tax deferment when in fact they do not want to be on record as voting for construction reform. And th that's, uh, you know, when you consider the importance of this to the state of Ohio, when you consider what's at stake, I, I just wonder quite frankly, when did they relinquish their responsibilities to govern? Uh, they are the majority party in the Senate. Uh, and so they've got a responsibility to govern, as well as I have as governor, as well as Speaker Butish have. But it seems as if they've just relinquished their responsibility to govern, to assume any responsibility for the well-being of this state. And they are holding this budget hostage. And I think it's, it's wrong. Uh, I think, uh, as I said yesterday, it, it's, it's, it's a sad day. Uh, or it's a sad time in, in Ohio when we see uh, the well-being of this state uh, dealt with in such a cavalier, callous manner. Governor.